Okay, so I have my fresh coffee. The box, very small box. Most importantly, I have a couple of our SIM cards. I do remember, I think this is a nano. I think there is a converter. But the reason I got two is that the one in my, um, I tell you, can't get a haircut in this town. The one in the original carry, um, and it does have a little holder, which I will show you by taking this off. There's a little, you can get your fingernail under here and take this cover off and you can get different colors of these. Uh, they're not particularly cheap, but, uh, and then under here, you've got a lovely little anodized gold SIM carrier. And this one seems to have failed, I don't know why. So I'm gonna put another one in and I'm gonna put the nano one straight in there. Now obviously, Did I check which way around that was supposed to go? No, I didn't. But we have this handy little indicator there. This is so annoying. Right, I will deal with that another time. As you can see, this is carry number one. Let's give it a bit of a polish. Um, I've had this now for at least two or three years. Um, I believe I got it in 18. Let's put its uh, case back on and we're going to start it up. You can see I've got a little bit of damage there. I don't know how that happened. But whilst that's starting up, I am going to pull this out of its little box and show you what we have. Obviously we have a packing slip, it's the original box, and then we've got this tiny little box. I'm not going to show you the original box because I do have it somewhere, but I can tell you it is about this high and about this square. Um, so interesting. Then that did come with a amount as well, a rather large amount that I, I never really used because I like um, I like my mount, which I'll actually show you. So I have a lot of OCD for a few things. I'm gonna put this the right way around for you. But generally, I can't stand a mount where you have your device kind of up here. It has to be at least flush with the mount. And this is the old style bar flying mount with the, I can't remember if this is the Apto stem or, but basically I don't use these anymore. I use a slightly different one and a different mount that actually lets it be even more flush. And so literally, I mean, it just, it's not a big thing, but I just want my computer to be flush with a stem. It's not that hard, is it? It shouldn't be, anyway. So we have a box. It's very nice. Look, it's got some indentations here. Um, so let's see what happens. Looks like we've got a slidey tray, have we? Have we got a slidey tray? I think we do have a slidey, right. So already we see it's a lot smaller. It's probably closer to a, this is about the same size, I'd say, as an Edge. It's slightly smaller than an Edge 800 or Edge 810. Wait, was it called an 820, the Bluetooth version? So this device, I'm kind of liking that. This is very nice. Um, so I think this is where the SIM card goes. Uh, I'm gonna need something to open that. I don't know why anybody specifies. I suppose you could say you always have a key, but I mean, coin slots were spe sort of spec'd when everybody had a coin, but now nobody carries cash in any case, and since COVID, even less so. But we shall not go that route. Right, so we are going to get a fresh SIM. It takes a nano SIM which is nice, I don't have to mess around with an adapter. Is this one of the lifty-uppy ones anyway? It is, yeah. Let's push that in. And then we slide it down and close it. And then we get our coin-operated cover. Now what I do like is it has a USB-C. Everything's going USB-C. I'm not a big fan of micro-USB. Um, 
I, I'm less of a fan of the mini USB that, uh, for example, the GoPros used to be and Garmin Edge uh, 800 is, but wow. I mean, totally different size. Now, a lot of people used to call this my iPad um, that I have on the front of my bike. And you can see why obviously it is quite large, but um, I kind of liked that size. Um, now, I will confess something. Now, as you can see, I am a Garmin fan. I've, this is the Garmin 5S. I've had the three, I've had the one Fenix. I had the 310 before that. I had the 910 or 920 or whatever it was called. Uh, the watches, I mean, obviously the 310 was not that great. Um, the 910, yeah, okay, you know, connectivity. Fenix 1, you couldn't connect it via Bluetooth. But by the time you got to the Fenix 3 and Fenix 5, love them, brilliant watches. Wear this all day long, absolutely love it. This is the S, which doesn't really have good battery life. In hindsight, I would have got... But I did actually want the Sapphire one in the normal size, which I think in hindsight is good. The reason I'm giving you this rattle on is that I had the Edge 800 and I've looked at every single Edge since and I've never seen one that I like. And I've never had anybody who has been really happy with uh, ones. And if you look, most of my friends, obviously they're not in, I mean, cyclists generally do have a bit of money, but every one of my friends has an 820, an 830, a 520, a 530, a 130, and a 10, whatever, a 1030. Um, and it's not normal for people to have so many of these devices. And the reason that they have so many of these devices is a very simple one. They don't like any of them very much. Whereas I've personally been very happy with this. I have never broken the foot. This is the revised foot that I got. I didn't break it beforehand. Uh, it is a little bit wobbly in the, um, it's not a perfect tight fit, uh, but I've been mountain biking with this. Um, and the reason I was going in with the watches as well is that previous to having these devices, I used to, uh, I mean, I've done the whole of the South Downs way with a Garmin uh, 310, which is like the first generation of these from 10 years ago and the breadcrumb map. And off road, the breadcrumb map is often better for fast navigation because it'll tell you the angle that you need to turn and quite often you can see the road better. I remember with the um, being in the middle of Wales doing the Transcambrian, four of us had sat nav, so we all had like the 800 or similar. Some people were using the topo maps, some people were using the Ordnance Survey maps uh, and other people were just using the breadcrumb. And there were, there were discussions, I think is the way to say it. There were discussions. Uh, but the breadcrumb at the end of the day is what got us where we need to go. Now, there are a couple of little holes there. I assume these are the uh, for the screws. It's using some kind of Torx. Uh, yeah, so USB-C, nice addition. This mount already, uh, I have my reservations. I mean, why would you go with a different mount? The world is like you know, bringing out a camera now and not using the GoPro mount or the quarter inch tripod mount. I mean, why would you? Everybody's got so many, so many mounts out there. Um, I do have a bit of OCD. I, I, I'm struggling to take that off at the moment. So what else do we have before we finish the unboxing? So we have a nice little instructions thing about the mount. See reverse for removal. Click, click. Okay. That's nice. Honestly, uh, you know, if you need, if you need that, then it's probably not been designed very well. Oh, so that's a clicky thing. Let's see what else we have in here. So we have a tray. And in this tray, we have, what the hell? It's like a flying saucer. Okay, that's good. I like that. I had some nightmare uh, scenarios of it being the original mount, I'll see if I can dig it out, but the original one was like the Garmin out front where you mount the device at the top. Don't like that. I must admit, I don't like side mounts. Again, OCD, but I prefer this kind of mount a million times over. Don't know why, but there's something about having, you know, coming up from just one side that uh, annoys me. But I think we can see as it should be intuitive. Okay. Nice, that's very nice and firm. I assume you twist sideways to get it out. Nice. 
I like that. So hopefully this will be an improvement, having, you know, me having just, but let's put this in for all of you guys who want to stay. That rattle, by the way, is from, from the step bolts not being tightened up. But yeah, as you can see, wobble. That's interesting. I'm gonna try my Garmin edge on there. Ah, I know why we've got wobble. Fortunately, we have an Allen key. No wobble. Let's hold this. No wobble, nice and firm. Nice, I like that. Which for some reason, I think the old one does have a little bit of wobble. So big, can't hold it and get it in. Does that have wobble? Yeah. See, this little bit of wobble was driving me mad. And the new one doesn't have it with the quarter turn, does it? No. That's just me not being able to hold that very well. But. Having said that, we're going to have to see how I get this onto here. I think I'm hoping that these two bolts correspond to these two bolts. And I can get this mount on my bar fly. Right, let's get back to it. So we have here the charging cable, which will be USB-C and a lanyard. And I'll show you another video of how I did the lanyard on my bike because I mean, the actual physical lanyard, I find a little bit, yeah, really. Um, so I have something a little bit better, but we'll get onto that. Right, so this is probably going back in the box forever. Let's get on with the, I just want to try this mount again. Oh, that's, that is nice. I like the clickety thing. Okay, I may take back, take back my comments on why would you redesign a mount? But you do get where I'm coming from, right? Um, I wanna kind of not be stuck with this mount, um, but yeah, I'll come back to that. Oh, he's pulled this lid, he's pulled the... How do you get this off? It's like it wants to go back in every time, okay. So we're gonna put that back in there. Don't know where that was. Don't think we need lovely Allen key. I like that, it's a nice touch. Uh, we're not gonna be using the lanyard. Um, nice USB cable. It would have been nice uh, if they'd have done a right-hand USB-C, which you'll kind of need for charging on the go. We do have like two or three right-hand micro USBs for uh, charging the uh, carry one on the go. Let's put this back. Nice little bit of packaging this. I like the tray and the uh, the double-decker approach. Is there anything else in there? No. Does the double-decker go back? <laughs> yeah. I like the double-decker approach, he says. Never get the thing back together again. So, let's move the box out of the way because all I want to focus on is this. I've got this one. So this is ready, you can see Updates available. So the touch screen is not always as, I think it's designed to use with gloves. So we're gonna download that and I'll put that like that so you can see. So we've got the SIM in. I'm gonna take my OCD cover off and we're gonna try and turn this on, which yeah, intuitively is not easy. Just try some buttons. So let's try that one. So what initially uh, brought me to the Karoo, obviously the battery could be flat. I doubt it though, there's usually a little bit of battery in a new device. 
Ah, there we go. So it's downloading. So what initially attracted me to these is being in the mobile industry is quite honestly having a SIM card that goes in. Um, and Android. Uh, I personally use iPhone. This is being recorded on an iPhone right now. But I kind of like, I mean, I do like Android. I, if there was no Apple iPhone, I would definitely have an Android device. Uh, well, this is, he says, <laughs> there is no choice really now. But uh, welcome to a new kind of head unit. Nice. We are now connected. It's already downloading the update, which is interesting. So we have two updates going on. Not the quickest download in the world. Um, and it's certainly not one 500 megabit fiber here. So it should be uh, a bit quicker. Interestingly, this one's beating that one but it just could be the servers. Um, they're prioritizing Karu 2's packages. I know I would uh, prioritize a new package. No, it's already restarting, that's quick. Now we can see we're at 99% battery. This is one of the things that you see a lot on the forum. So the few things that you'd see is um, and how people criticize this one is the uh, the foot braking. I honestly haven't had that issue. Um, and I ride mountain as well as road, but prior, primarily mountain and gravel at the moment. But I mean, I've had this on, uh, even on stems like this that I'm not supposed to put so much weight on and I've never had a problem. So Hammerhead Karu 2 is speeding ahead and restarting whilst Number one is still downloading its update. Um, they are typically about 500 megabytes uh, and they they have downloaded over cellular a few times. So one of the things they do need to put in here is to, um, within native Android, there's ability to specify what type of things you wanna go over mobile and not. And really over mobile, you only want it to update maps uh, and things like that. Now you can see we've got the, oh, I was a second too late there. Sign into your account. This is right on the edge needing a, uh, whereas the screen is big enough to write fairly easily. This is right on the edge of being able to write uh, on the screen. But it appears, yep, I managed to get my password and we're still on the download. Now I had the, one of the things, one of my complaints, I don't think many people were really bothered, uh, sign in success. So, yep, that's nice. By connecting your Strava on dashboard to enable live segments. Yep, I wanna do that. Sensors, pick a card to learn more about your Karu. Ooh, we have a game. I know, it's not one of these cards. <laughs> I thought we had taken gamification, I hate that word, to a new level. If you work in the mobile industry, you've learned to hate. Ah, you see, now they show what the power on button is. That's nice. I hadn't noticed it, but it's nice. Right. It's, um, whilst this box is very nice, it's clearly not been designed for things to go back. Sensors, pair your sensors. I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, phone pairing, I'm not gonna do right now because I'm recording on it. Uh, let's try and keep that alive. So yeah, we're 98%. Now, a lot of people had, apart from the feet that I was talking about before, had an issue with battery life. So uh, yeah, you can learn more. I'm not really interested in doing any of these cards. So I'm gonna try and get out of this and show you the system. So yeah, we've got slightly new icons. So we have a location icon, which I assume means because it's using my location. Um, this is identical, uh, well, because we're downloading, probably gonna stop the recording and go over, but uh, it's a lot clearer now. The R icon and the fact that it's using cellular is a lot clearer. Before you had like a SIM icon there. And when it was on, I never really knew whether I was uh, using uh, cellular data or whether Wi-Fi was on or not. Uh, but yeah, other than that, all very nice. 
So let's wait until this is downloaded and then we can compare them side by side. Right, so it seems like it's time to restart and install. So we're gonna restart and install and just show you guys that process. It's usually pretty quick. And in the meantime, we might have a little play. So the interface, if you already know Karu, is uh, you just slide from one side to the other. And if you wanna just get going, you just get going. Um, but I'm gonna show you, so yeah, you're in a ride now, 29% battery, which is nice. So we'll see how the battery goes down. But uh, you can go and see uh, your rides. I don't ride enough. I've been on the Swift the last few days. It's been pretty awful weather here. Roots, it should have, has it synced all my roots yet? No. Yes, it has. Okay, so we have a map update available. Let's see if we can download that. I have a few maps, so Let's see if the five gigabyte use of 26 gigabytes, so that's a massive improvement. I think this was 9.4 was available. Uh, so yeah, it's downloading my maps. I don't have very many maps. I have uh, part of Europe, I think just Spain and France, which is where I've been cycling in 2020. Uh, and the UK, obviously. Um, I don't know, I think they're on slightly different maps, I can't remember. Uh, and I haven't cycled anywhere else at the moment. So the base maps are using five gig and it seems to have locked 4.9 gig, which I think is the France, Spain and UK maps that are going on there. You can see that the update is still going on here, but we should have them pretty much identical. Um, so let's go back whilst that's doing that. It'll carry on in the background. Uh, workouts, I don't think I have any workouts on this, so you won't be able to see any of that. I, mean, I just can't be bothered. I go, I cycle by feel, um, as in, you know, feel tired and old most of the time. Uh, the settings, let's see if there's anything different in here. So you've got your Hammerhead account, Strava Life segments, rider profile, I wonder if that's all filled in. Yep, that's all synced. Um, connected services. Uh, so yeah, it's synced Strava already. Bikes, see if they've all synced over. No, well, they have all synced over. Just that I don't really yet, I haven't imported any bikes. So I've only done 2,400 kilometers on Karoo. Uh, the main reason is, well, so one thing I will say is that this carry, one of the problems I had is it would report about 3% less kilometrage than the Garmin. And so I would go out on a ride with a bunch of people that said, uh, so, I mean, one of the people I ride with is literally at the end of the road. So we'd start the Garmin together, go exactly together, and we'd both have, for example, 90 kilometers, and this would say 88 or even as low as 87. So I've never really used, uh, so basically I use this as a backup. Um, now I went on the forums and I've looked on the uh, Facebook page and people said, well, you need to get your uh, speed sensor. You need to get the size of your wheels right. Um, so I put a speed sensor on, it calculated the size of my wheels. Now, admittedly, I do generally run fatter tires, which will have a bigger diameter than than most bikes, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, I'll be very interested to see, and I'll do an update as to whether the new Karoo is 3% uh, under, but as you can imagine, you know, in the, when you're on Strava and you're trying to compete with your friends, uh, you know, going on a 90K ride and only recording 87, it's a big no-no. Uh, the training zones, uh, heart rate zones, see if it's brought them over. So my max, yeah, um, my max heart rate cycling is about 190. I can get over 200 running, but cycling obviously less supported weight. The power zones, uh, auto, yeah, I'm pretty good with that. Uh, I'm not a big, I don't do anything. So sensors, we're gonna do that in a bit. Phone pairing, uh, I'm gonna do that off camera. 
But yeah, hopefully this has given you a nice little unboxing. Let's do the start on this one. So, and hopefully we'll be able to do the same one on this. Uh, there's the map. The map's probably still updating, so you won't see much. But yeah, I think the rest, the, so the next update, so we're at 27%, so we've lost 2% in the time that we're doing this. So what I will be giving you an update is to whether it's uh, how the battery life is, whether it reports accurately um, along with this one, and uh, yeah, generally how it is to use, uh, how much battery is being used, and um, I'll get the screens working with DI2. So there's another video, which I can probably try and link to here, which shows this working with the DI2, which is rather nice. Um, and I've configured my two buttons to go between the map view and the um, and the uh, stats view, which is kind of a nice thing to have. Uh, has it actually synced my what I have? So I generally, yeah, I have my ride time. It's, it's in a ride now, which is nice. Speed, distance, power, cadence, grade, and heart rate monitor and the gears. That's all I like to have in a ride and I can see them really quickly. Now, one of the things to end on a positive that I really, really like is that, and I hinted at it before. So before for fast mountain bike and fast navigating on the road where I didn't know where I was, I preferred the breadcrumb to Garmin. The reason for that is that the screens that I've had on the Garmin's at least were not good enough to have maps. Obviously this, you don't want maps. But honestly, there wasn't enough. I think it's all about the PPI, um, the pixels per inch. The pixels per inch on this are very high. It's kind of like, you know, high quality smartphone. The pixels per inch on the Garmin's typically have lagged and been low. And so when you're trying to quickly see where you're going on the fly, you're literally glancing at something in a second. Now I can see all the data that I want in a glance here. Um, I think pretty much, even though this is a lot smaller device, I'll be able to see them, but I'll be reporting that back to you as well. But what's really nice is on the maps, I could literally see everything I need to see on the maps really quickly. Good, I like the fact, I do like the, uh, so this hasn't been paired yet, but you can see the um, gearbox sign there for the DI, when DI2 is connected, and obviously the power, and I'm hoping these will come back to here, but we're now down to 26% and this is at uh, 98. Obviously it's not, I mean, this has lost 3%, this has only lost 2%, but as you may know or not, a full battery loses power slower than an empty battery. So, and this battery has not been really cycled yet. So we're gonna get it charged. We're gonna get out. I'm gonna get this video out and then we'll do a little update of what it's like to ride. My friends are gonna whiz me down to Box Hill again, no doubt. And so, yeah, I'll do a little bit of a review on it. I've certainly enjoyed unboxing it and comparing it to the old one. That has been my little review of the uh, Carry 2 so far. You can see it is a lot smaller in every single way, except most importantly, the screen. I mean, yeah, those numbers are a little bit smaller, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to manage this. I think we got this. I like this. I do like this. Um, a lot of people criticizing it because it's smaller. I think, uh, you know, I, I, did, I didn't get bored of people calling this an iPad, but it is a bit big, it is a bit heavy. And I never really had a big concern because I'm not one of those people who was worried about it dropping. And I honestly, I mean, I do drop, I've done two foot jumps with this on. Uh, I've bottomed out the, I've got a Trek stash with three inch uh, tires and no suspension. I've bottomed out the only suspension I have, which is the tires, uh, you know, dinged a rim on, uh, and this has been rock solid. Okay, it's a little bit wiggly, which we can't explain, but that could be the Garmin mount. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty happy. I like the new SIM mount, obviously, a lot better, but let's get out there and let's see how it, I'm gonna be riding it with the Garmin this weekend and on Monday, Tuesday, I should have a little update for you.